Earlier this year, I talked about tips on how to read more. And one of my tips was to read the books that you own. It's going to be to read the books you own. And I know that can be incredibly tough and I, I relate to that fully. Some of my favorite videos to make on YouTube and favorite videos to watch from other creators on YouTube are book hauls. Mm. It is so, so obviously I, I follow my own advice and uh, no, I don't. I simply don't. I don't follow my own advice. Why would I? I have, I wouldn't call it a problem, but I I do have a bit of a wandering eye when it comes to, you know, looking at other books while I have plenty more to read that are in my house already. So I just wanted to talk this through. Maybe we arrive at a solution after I talk about some of these books I bought, or this just perpetuates a, a cycle that already exists of me continuing to add to this library. Yeah, let's let's talk about some of these books. The first one is going to be R.F. Huang's Babel. Babel? Babel? I think it's Babel. Correct me if I'm wrong. This appears to be a bit of like dark academia through the lens of like historical fantasy. I think that's how it works. It seems like it explores imperialism a little bit with some magic things going on, as it says in arcane history. It seems like everybody and their mothers read this book and loved it last year. So, you know, call me your mom or don't, you don't, you know, don't do that. Anyway, very excited to read this one. The next one from V.E. Schwab, Gallant, and it is a, a signed edition. So that's, that's that's great. Not an excuse to buy it, but it kind of put a little bit of a cherry on top. Know what I'm saying? Heard great things about this book. Seems like it's a pretty quick read. I don't know a ton about it, but it seems to be about a character who's sort of called home. Maybe there's like a paranormal supernatural thing going on with some, some haunting possibly. I don't know. It's one of those that has a great cover. I've had one experience reading V.E. Schwab and it was, you know, Addie LaRue, which I, I enjoyed. I didn't like love it more than life itself, but it was, it was a solid book. The next book is a bit predictable if you've been keeping up with sort of the books I've been I've been reading here. In 2023, as well as 2022, I started my Brandon Sanderson journey last year. I absolutely sprinted through the Mistborn books. I started uh, the Stormlight Archive with Way of Kings. I read Elantris and Warbreaker, and uh, I'm currently three books through the Stormlight Archive, four if you count Edge Dancer. So I figured I'd, I'd keep it going, and I got the novella that sort of bridges the gap, I think, between Oathbringer and Rhythm of War, which is Dawn Shard. Much smaller than I expected it to be. This is like a, a, the hardback that was a standard of what was purchased, and it is like, you know, smaller than my hand, which is weird for a hardback. Very tiny, small novella. Interested to see if it operates in a similar way that, you know, Edge Dancer did between Words of Radiance and Oathbringer. But all in all, I'm just really enjoying Sanderson's Stormlight Archive. I have a ton of thoughts about it because it is so incredibly engaging and now a sort of almost year removed, I guess about like a half year removed from starting it with Way of Kings. Totally understand all the hype that sort of preceded my beginning it. And while we're on the subject of fantasy, you know, I, I, I've talked about series, how I have a problem <laughs> with pigeonholing myself by starting like every series in sight, every series of imaginable because I simply can't help myself. I love series. I love immersing myself in these epic, sprawling, incredibly detailed, in-depth worlds because, you know, maybe it's like a disassociation problem. Maybe it's me just trying to escape reality, or I just have good taste in, in reading. I don't really know. But regardless of what it is, I, I went and bought the first three books of, of Wheel of Time. It was a matter of time. You all knew it was going to happen. Road I was going down. I knew it would inevitably happen. So honestly, I did my Myself and all of you a favor by just like biting the bullet, ripping the band-aid off, and just finally committing to these. And I know a lot of people talk about how, oh, Wheel of Time, it's just a it's just a Tolkien rip-off. It's just a rip-off of Lord of the Rings. Clearly, it's it's more than just that. It seems like that's doing it a bit of a disservice, considering the fact that it's what, like 14 books long. And I don't anticipate even reading the first three this year. And I definitely don't anticipate reading the full series this year, obviously, but I do want to finally get started with it. But before I do so, I have a few boxes I need to check. I need to finish the Stormlight, or at least I need to catch up on the Stormlight Archive. I need to catch up completely on the Song of Ice and Fire series. I need to catch up on the King Killer Chronicles series. And then I think at that point, I will allow myself to 
delve into this. And we've talked previously about how 2023 has been a pretty fantasy heavy year for me thus far, but I think I've begun to sort of balance the scales pretty well with my other primary love when it comes to genre, which is definitely horror. I talk about horror on a weekly basis on this channel. So it's nice that my reading is definitely starting to match that again after just like really going into fantasy diving in head first. So the first one, Echo. I absolutely could not get enough of Hex when I read it last year. Another release this year, but he doesn't, to my knowledge, write his books in English when he first publishes them. So it's always a bit of a waiting period, which is totally cool. You know, I'm not I'm not upset about that. He is very talented. He seems like a nice guy. And I love I love the books that he's writing. I am eagerly anticipating the next book after this one. And if this is anything like Hex, I'm going to love the, the heck out of it or the hex out of it. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. This is about a travel journalist and a, and a mountaineer who are on a trip and one of them wakes up from seemingly like a, a coma or he was just previously unconscious and realizes that his friend is like, you know, out of service at that point and sort of has to figure out what's going on while they are on this sort of mountain trip in the Swiss Alps, which is an absolutely intriguing setup. The next book on today's book haul is from an author who I've been trying to read more of. I've actually, honestly, at this point, only read one of his books, but I continue to buy his books because I liked that book that I read so much and I intend on catching up on them. Some of them just happen to be, you know, pretty long and, you know, I'm a busy guy. I'm making excuses. I, I'm, you know, two books deep into the Stormlight Archive this year alone. So I have no excuses. I'm going to read more of his work here soon. I went ahead and bought The Books of Blood from Clive Barker. I love Clive Barker's work. I love the way he writes. He's such an eloquent writer in the horror genre seem to be some of the the work that he's done that sort of put him on the map as a Mount Rushmore level horror author eager to get into more Clive Barker this year and I, I had to pick up the books of blood these are volumes one two three and finally from one of my favorite horror authors at this current moment in time and one of my favorite horror authors in general at this point Stephen Graham Jones mongrels had to pick this one up at the time of recording Recording this, I've finished his second book in the Lake Witch trilogy, Don't Fear the Reaper, and I, I absolutely loved it. I've loved both of those books. I've read The Only Good Indians. I think I've read one or two others by him at this point, so this one was sort of next on my list. And, you know, when I'm perusing the horror section, I always gravitate towards apparently guys named Stephen. It's Stephen King, and now it's Stephen Graham Jones. We'll see if there are any other Stevens out there who capture my attention the same way that these authors do. But Stephen Graham Jones can't wait wait to read more of his work in the near and far future. Mongrels, the main character, is a bit of an outsider in his group and his family, and I think this one, you know, brings some werewolves into the fold. I'm not really entirely sure on the on the context of that, but I do know that a frequent component of Stephen Graham Jones' work is the sort of Native American heritage background or backdrop that serves as a setting or some cultural context in the main characters, side characters' lives, and that's something that I never experienced before reading Stephen Graham Jones and something that has opened my eyes up to a culture that I was admittedly, you know, not entirely familiar with and uh, a component of his writing that makes it unique that I now gravitate towards and find very interesting and engaging and compelling. So love Stephen Graham Jones, love all the work he does. So those are nine books that I have already bought this year. Let me know if you followed my advice from one of my earlier videos when it came to sticking to reading the books that you own because apparently I cannot even follow that advice. Let me know the books that you have recently bought, the ones you've been reading, the ones you've been liking this year down in the comments below. Outside of that, happy reading, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Peace.